There we go. Thank you very much. Um, OK, let me tell you before I talk about quantum dots, let me tell you about the people who do, do the work. Uh, it, th this was done by Ping Hua Ji, um, who is doing a lot of the sy synthetic chemistry. And then their, their application to neurons was done by Ann Kai and Sang Hak Lee. And I also want to thank my dog, Lucky, uh, because, I don't know, I love her, basically. OK, so uh, let me, before I get into the photonics business, uh, let me tell you a little bit ab about nerves. And in particular, when two nerves co connect or contact each other, they do it through a synapse. Here's nerve one connecting to ner nerve two. Here's the presynapse. The electrical signal is coming here. It goes through the synapse and then continues on through nerve two. And what we have is we actually have a synapse between nerve one and nerve two. And that synapse is typically about 30 nanometers across. So it's very, very small. And in particular, in the postsynaptic density, that's called a PSD, there are things called AMPA receptors and also NMDA receptors. And these, what, what happens is there's little vesicles which, upon stimulation by the nerve impulse, comes the vesicle merges with the cell membrane. It releases a little bit of, in this case, glutamate. Glutamate goes and diffuses across, interacts with AMPA receptors and also NMDA. They open up, and the opening up uh, eventually leads to uh, for the further propagation of the signal. The AMPA receptors, so this is what we're going to be looking at. The AMPA receptors are right here on the edge of the postsynaptic density. And there's a lot of uh, proteins that are there to su support it. And what we need to do is we need to see these with 3D because they, they can be a, in all different orientation. We need to to look at an individual one, therefore we want fluorescence. And we need to do it with super resolution because this distance is about the diffraction limit of light. So where we would like to go and see what is the organization, for example, of the AMPA receptor. So we, what we re really want is nanometer resolution. So that's one thing. Second is we need small and photostable probes. And the reason is, is A, if you have small probes, like organic fluorophores, they tend not to be photostable, so you can look for only a few seconds. If you want very photostable probes, they tend to be these quantum dots, which can last for hours. But the problem is they're sufficiently large typically 20 nanometers in diameter, that they don't actually fit very well in here. And third, we want to see live cells. We don't want to bother with uh, fixed cells. OK, and the point is to determine the AMPA receptors, the other uh, proteins over here, and also over here. OK, first, I want to tell you about how we do three-dimensional resolution. And this is largely not my work. Um, essentially, if you have a, an object over here that's very small, that over here is about the diffraction limit of light, if you shine light on it, you get a mess, basically, because each one is about 250 nanometers of the resolution of visible light. So let's start again. You take, a, take it and you shine very weak light. And what happens is occasionally they're excited. 
Once they're, they're excited, the, the molecules that you have, you then come in with regular light and you excite these that are, regu that are excited and you can localize it not just to 250 nanometers, but actually you can do it with about a nanometer resolution. And then, so you get that here, and then you essentially do it repetitively and you get that. Okay, so that's how to get nanometer resolution and it's creating a revolution in microscopy. If you want to do three dimensions, you, do, you use an aspheric um, lens in front of the detector, which allows you to get the Z resolution fairly easily. And what we've done is we've actually done this. In this case, these are nerves right, right over here in, in blue and in red. That's the presynaptic and the postsynaptic. And you can see that occasionally we can actually see that we can see the distance between them, and that's because we have re the resolution that we can see the, the synapse. Okay, now, but in order to see the AMPA receptors, we can't use regular fluorophores because they would die very rapidly. Okay, and we can't use the, the big quantum dots, which are commercially available, because as you see, they're sufficiently large where they don't get inside. So what we've done is we've made some small quantum dots that are on the order of six to na nine nanometers. And these, it turns out, are small enough that they can fit right in the synapse and you can get an unobstructed view. And what we did is we take the core, which is like an, anywhere from two to five nanometers, and then what we do is we label it with a very little ligand shell over here, which it turns out it happens to be about 10 carbons, then with a little bit of PEG to make it water soluble over here, and then we can functionalize it. And I should say over here, it's with a sulfur which binds very strongly to the quantum dot core, which is typically made of cadmium selenide. And in fact, we made them, and you see this one happens to be 6.3 nanometers in size. And in fact, we've made one that are 527, 560, 615, 650 nanometers, et cetera. You can put them on a, a cover slip with like biotin avidin, you can see individual ones. You can localize them to, again, about a nanometer. And in fact, the individual ones, it, it, it blinks. Sometimes it's on, sometimes it's off. OK? OK. So what we did is we want, wanted to do this actually on neurons. And this, first, we wanted to take a look at the big Q dots because many people have actually done these because of their fantastic fluorescence par, uh, behavior. And this over here is one nerve, and this here is another nerve. What we have is, for example, let's look at this. That looks right over here. In blue, what we've done is we've done this very high resolution, getting on the order of 10 nanometers. We've labeled it, uh, labeled a postsynaptic density protein. The point is, in blue, it, it's essentially the size of the, uh, it, it's essentially the synapses. But you can see in red that primarily they are not binding to the synapse, but are in fact are primarily binding anywhere, everywhere else. In fact, about 85% of them are bound. In, uh, intersynaptically, and only about 15% are bound sy synaptically. And now we wanted to do it with the AMPA receptors. There's blue and then the red. We, we can do it in three dimensions. And take a look at this. 
and we can zero in. And this is now a, a, a single AMPA receptor. Notice, first, that you can see it. Second, that it's actually diffusing around. Third, that actually the AMPA receptor is diffusing in a part of the synapse. All of this is totally new information. Okay, and we can measure it in three dimensions. And in fact, here we find about 85% of them are within the synapse and about 15% are extrasynaptic. And furthermore, what I was saying, how the AMPA receptors are in diffusing in only part of it, and that there you can see they're, they're color-coded, and that at first it's uh, blue, and then the latest is red. So clearly over here, even though it looks like one subdomain, in fact, it's many of them. And that here's yet another one, and here's yet a third one. And notice that sometimes, in fact, it's very clearly subdomain and then subdomain. Other times, it sort of moves along. OK. And now, in conclusion, we can get three-dimensional fluorescence imaging with 10 to 20 nanometer resolution with small quantum dots, which are chemically stable a few months. They're photostable on the order of an hour. They're bright, about a third of the brightness of commercial quantum dots. They have better access to the synapse. And you can tell new information about the diffusion of amper receptors. And thanks very much.